Hello and you're welcome um, to the Backdoor Football Show. Tonight I'm joined by Finian Hanley and Johnny McGee. Um, we're taking it pretty much that the intercounty season is going ahead, but this is being recorded now on Monday night, so it could change. But um, I suppose, Johnny, it's probably good that it's going ahead for a lot of reasons, um, especially just for people to have a conversation with people, because we all know GA is just such a good conversation for people, really. Ah, yeah, look, absolutely. Um, look, I suppose from from house, well, I suppose there's a, a double-edged sword in relation to how successful the club went, championships went, until you got to the county final celebrations and stuff. Um, you know, whereas the, you know, the, the pe- people had something to look forward to, people were looking forward to. Now, for instance, I was telling a few people today and, and uh, a few of my mates, and they really enjoyed yesterday and Saturday. And I have to say, look, I spent... Saturday and Sunday watching the telly with all the sport that was on and credit to RT and TG Carter like and uh, air like, you know so I had had the phone had the laptop and the TV going so yeah look I enjoyed it now in fairness and um, it was great seeing seeing the, the bit of football and look uh, and some of some of some of the fascinating games of football as well you know so a lot of it was a couple of high scoring games as well so yeah look it's hugely positive from that point of view um but look look it's the other side of then the seriousness of what is going on but um look i suppose that's look you're hoping um that people people that like this the cohort of people are, are, are doing what they're told but there is a few that aren't and, and i think it's that kind of that's what's kind of dragging the rest of us down, is my opinion. And look, I suppose my other thing is the guards and I haven't got a full, aren't given the proper powers as well to implement, which is I find it, find amazing when you look at other other uh, countries that implement fines and stuff and carry it out. So look, but anyway. Absolutely, spot on there. And I suppose, for him, we haven't seen COVID cases with too many uh, setups yet. Probably only for man and her mass so far. So I suppose if you're looking with COVID it hasn't been involved in too many county setups so that's probably another reason for it to go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's it's um it, it could have gone the other way, it could have been rife, you know, when, when the teams got back training. You know, I don't know what the protocol is in, in, in the likes of Lock George or DCU or these places where the lads are all training. I presume they're 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 adhering as much as they can given the you know the the amount you know they really want this to go ahead. I think all the players after the years they after the year they put in and you saw what the um the survey, the GPA survey, that majority of the players wanted it to go ahead. So, um, maybe, maybe like lads are starting to look at it and say, well, you know, this could be in jeopardy if we don't cop on. So, uh, there's been a couple of counties, as you said, for Mana, Arma, um, you know, cases. Obviously, Donegal not in the panel, but Donegal or Donegal, sorry, had an early case uh, earlier on a couple of weeks back. You know, but they've kind of dealt with that. I heard Ryan McHugh talking about it last week. So, um, you know, look, there, there, you know, there's a lot of conversation about this with testing and, you know, testing for teams and each up the testing, obviously, for the inter-county teams if, if this is going to happen. Uh, that's the first thing that needs to happen because, like, they're elite sports people, you know, you might say they're professional, but they're they're part of the elite now. Uh, they're part of the professional game, given they're thrown in with all the other professionals. So um, they're going to have to have to manage this rigidly and, and professionally if they wanted to go ahead. So hopefully we don't get anything else. We had a incidents here, obviously in Galway, um, uh, well well documented on the front of papers and stuff like that. From from as Johnny said, celebrations and stuff. But I think I think I think the players, the intercounty lads, are professional enough to mind themselves and the management. Uh, will be will be laying down the law in the next couple of weeks to ensure it doesn't happen. And I suppose getting to the action, Johnny, um, probably not the best result from a goer's perspective, but um, Mayo winning out 323 to 17 points. And you'd have to say some of the young lads they inherited yesterday, Oshie Mullen at cornerback, but especially Mark Warren at centre forward, he looks like the player Mayo has just been missing in the last few years. Yeah, look, um, very impressed, um, especially for his debut as well. It was a one-two, and he was involved with another another couple of points and another goal as well. Um, you know, but look, I suppose uh, Mayo played very well. Um, you know, but then you throw the other question, like you know, how how much work have Galway done as well? Like you know, I suppose you, you don't go out intentionally to lose, but like perform like that in the first half, um, and. 
you know, I suppose the the all this issue, the hype around Jim McGinnis being involved the week previous, the weekend previous, and but like you know, for me, they look oh, always look a little bit tired, they look a little bit leggy. So who's to know what kind of a week or build up they've had the last couple of weeks? Because I know know Porig and the boys like their focus is like their their well their their aim will be all Ireland, um, you know, when when and time to win the Connacht's. Um, title, so you know it was very well, very well. May I look, they were very impressive yesterday. He's probably the best bit of football I've seen him playing in a long time, and the way they, and how they played it. But then again, you know, as I said to you, look, oh, we could have been coming off the back of a heavy load in terms of Jim and work, and with their eye for for a few weeks down the line, because look, they're um they're in contention still, kind of to win the league. So I'd say they weren't expecting. That much of a uh, uh, like uh, obviously a beating, but um, I'd say that like I think there was a the, the management had a conversation mm-hmm. on what I would say what's our goal here, the objective would be to win Connacht and, win, and go and win an All Ireland. So, so the way I would look at it, like yes, they, they put they were fantastic for the for the lockdown came, um, but the like the eyes would be firmly on on win like Connacht and Connacht and getting again to an All Ireland. Yeah, and um, feeling like. Mayo's scores really came from the back. Paddy Durkin running from deep, Owen McLaughlin, um, O'Shea Mullen. What was you put Goy struggling down to yesterday? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a tough question. I suppose to Johnny's point, I don't think you know losing was was you know. I think if 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 the, if we lost respectfully, I think that wouldn't have been a huge issue. I think. Porrick probably had it in his head, uh, and I'm guessing here, but he probably had it in his head to try lads through the league, and and he stuck to his guns. In fairness to him, you know, I know we're we're, we're a lot closer to the championship, and we've been out for for six months, but you know, uh, there was lads in there and probably going well in training. And, you know, a couple of our one of our own lads made his debut yesterday, um, and and I think Porrick would have stuck to his guns by giving these lads a chance prior to championship, and maybe he would have looked at ramping it up then next week. Uh, I suppose the disappointing thing is the manner. Of Manner of the defeat, um, particularly in Tume, you know, our, our record is good, and and and, and the lads have know Tume quite well, so I, I wasn't expecting that. That you know, at half time, um, um, you know, I, I I haven't seen a game with a score like that at half time, so it was it was peculiar. Um, to be fair, I think mm-hmm. I think Mayo are, Mayo are strong. Uh, you know, you hear a lot over the last couple of years about Mayo being finished this, that, and the other. Um, you know, James Horn's no fool. He's not come back in, you know, to try and resurrect and 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 get another four or five years out of out of Keith or Aiden or, or these guys. He knew there was lads coming because he had managed in Westport and he'd been watching the game. So you know, he saw a number of Westport lads there yesterday. You know, then you've got the likes of Fionn McDonough, uh, Fergal Boland wasn't playing. Um, you know, these, these fellas, Tommy Conroy, um. Super, super talent. Who was involved with him in the in the freshers and NUIG? Super talent. Uh, showed well yesterday with three points. Very, very, you know, kind of like an uh, Connor Mortimer. You know, you know, premature to be talking like that, but that elusive corner forward that can 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 win a very hard ball. You know, no matter how it's kicked into him, and and turn and turn and turn and get a score. You know, you saw brilliant skill from him yesterday as well. So look, Mayo. Mayo were coming from all angles. They seemed to be well, well very well coached. Uh, mm-hmm. They knew what they were at yesterday, and uh, they'll take look. They'll take as every year, uh, as you know, Dublin Kerry and these lads know when they get when they get their gander up, they're they're very hard to beat, and it'll be no different this year. But look, our lads will regroup. Uh, a big one against the Dubs on Sunday in Pierce Stadium. You know, obviously a lot of pride at stake. Can we win the league now? I I don't think so. Um, it'll be tough. Obviously, we've reversed all the score difference. So, uh, but I look, we're 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 not out of it by any means yet. And Johnny, do you feel um, God playing Dublin now this weekend? Do you feel psychologically this game is so important for them um, to get a result? Obviously, Poor Joyce hasn't really had this in management so far, so it'll probably test his management team as well. I look, I say, poor look, poor will we'll, we'll be relishing to, uh, to get back out on the field. You know, um, particularly after the performance the, uh, the other, on uh, Sunday, you know, they'll be looking to get it back on the field and rectify it. And no better way to go and rectify that than playing the All Ireland champions, um, who didn't like look, they, they, they played all right on, on, on Saturday evening there. Um, but, you know, if, if I'm in the Galway dressing room or if I'm the Galway manager, I would definitely looking to get back out on the field and to rectify 
what happens uh, the last day. Um, and knowing Joyce and the lads that are involved with them, they will they will be um won't be too happy about how how it went and how like and even Parks said himself, it is the worst he's seen in his forty three years involved as uh, like of being around in Galway. So like from to, and in fairness him look he took responsibility um about the performance himself, which look every good manager does. So look yeah, I look for me, um if you're a player number one I'd be looking at myself and what my performance, how uh, like, how how can I improve and how can I show the reaction to the manager, uh, for letting him down, you know. So, you know, um, there's no, there's always a danger with a wounded animal, and those lads, like, there's no better way to get yourself up for, than playing the All Ireland Champions, you know. So uh, it'll be, uh, look, it'll be, it should, uh, it should be a good game. Parks should not need any motivation for those boys, um, particularly after the last day, you know. Yeah, and um, just uh, lastly, now touching on the Galway Mayo game, um, Finian, could you see Mayo deploying the tactic, of sticking with these young guns, starting them, and then being able to bring in the old experience sets of Colin Boyle, Chris Barrett, Donny Vaughan, um, Keith Higgins, Shamey O'Shea, all playing an impact role this year, maybe instead? Um, I don't know, Paul. To be honest, I, I think I think I think what Jane, what James Horn is trying to create down there is is is, is competition. Uh, you know, the, you know, over the years, and particularly the last seven or eight years, now maybe there has been competition, but the same lads have been have been there, and 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 really to get the last ounce out of those guys now, they need to be pushed by younger guys coming through. And uh, you know, I suppose Johnny will tell you. I can tell you myself. It's 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 great to get that kick. You know when lads come in and you see them coming over your shoulder, and if you have Anton left at all, you'll give it everything. And maybe maybe they don't. And 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 subs is 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 the best for the likes of Keith and these guys. But they still have a lot to a lot to offer. They'll they have huge experience playing at the latter end of the championship in these big games. So there's a nice there's a nice mix there. Um, I think what they do have coming through is they have some really good players. I think. As I, as I alluded to before, the Tommy Conroy's, you know, that that type of four. I, I see Connor Loftus was out around the middle yesterday, uh, which is interesting, you know, because he had been, you know, they've been looking for this forward, uh, you know, on end of early. Uh, you know, they've been looking for that inside forward to replace a Mortimer and they haven't really found him. You know, Killian's been there, but, uh, you know, Killian works very hard, takes the freeze, you know, come, chips in with loads of scores and all that. But that, that really elusive forward that can open up defences they, they haven't found them so I think they found a couple of gems obviously the Mark Moran at, at centre forward who can who can pick a pass um you know Aiden inside look you know I think with Aiden inside you get I think what has happened in the last couple of years is the game is opening up a small bit since the we call it the the, the blanket defence is kind of going away a small bit and I think that Aiden O'Shea hasn't changed, you know. In 2015, when he gave us all a hammer, and, uh, in about five games in a row, he took us all, including myself, you know, like absolutely bowled over everybody. Uh, and then the following year, people learned and they put two and three on Aiden. And that happened for two or three years. So every time Aiden went inside, two or three lads went in with him. I even Dublin would have two on him at a time. Uh, and now it's opened up a bit again. So we saw that yesterday. Once the game opened up a bit, you know, Aiden inside is unstoppable, really. And if they can. You know, in open games, they get enough ball into him early. He'll he'll do damage. So they've got a huge, ba- a lovely balance in, in attack, and I think, you know, they'll get they'll 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 put big scores on the board this year. Yeah, and I suppose um just moving on to the Dublin Meath game, um Dublin getting over the line by four points in the end, one twenty to nineteen points. Um, but I suppose for their first game in six or seven months, Johnny and. Obviously, no James McCarthy, Michael Larry McCauley, um, Paul Mellon. It wasn't impressive by any means, but they got the job done still. Oh, yeah, look, um, you would have would have felt that, you know, they were always in control. Um, in fairness to me, look, me me gave a good showing. They look, you know, they were their second half performance was very good. Um, considering, like, you know, you just always felt that Dublin were able to pull away or get the scores when needed. Whenever me got close or put the effort in to get close, there was always seemed to that that, that Dublin could go stretch that an extra bit bit and get the get the score. Um and it's like when you've got forwards the likes of Dean Rock who was on fire at the moment chipping in one eight and then you've got Khan chipping in with three and Kieran Kilkenny chipped in with two or three as well. You know, it's that it's the you know that having those players that you 
you know, if you give quality ball to it, they're always going to punish your opposition. And I suppose it goes to what uh, Finton relating to Mayo there. You know, you could always, if you're any good team only has, like, if you want to win an all you need more than one or two forwards. Whereas Dublin, their spread of scores across the forward line changes with each game. And I think that's what, what Mayo, look, I don't want to play Mayo again, but that's what Mayo needs from that point of view. Um, but look, going back to the, the match, impressed with with um, Mead and some of their play passes of play, and look, they, they did a few eyes as well, and they look for goal opportunities as well. Um, so look, yeah, Dublin happy to get the win, um, and for stay back, you know, uh, it's a uh, get a bit of rushiness out of it because um, and then look, as you said, there, there's a few lads come back in, but look, they would have been happy enough to get points on the board. Probably know themselves. They've they've a little bit more work to do, but he always felt that any time me got closer, that the Dublin had another another gear to go to. Now whether they put into when they went, they probably stayed around two or four gear, and they used to they kind of flirted with fifth gear every so often when they needed to, to get a score or two, you know. Um, but yeah, look, it was some nice open football in it. Yeah, and I suppose um, a huge positive for me was I didn't try and tell one ten to six points down but like from seeing loads of games this year me to be involved in, in division one they're just really lacking that ruthlessness in front of goal to really go and put on to the next level finian really oh yeah definitely you know they're they're they've been unlucky in a couple of games i know against galway they were they were unlucky they really pushed pushed up that day and caused our lads loads loads of trouble you know so they, they've been that type of team you know and you can get teams like that who who come into Division One and they push, you know, the novelty factor. But effectively, when it comes to the last five or ten minutes, the the the, the, the Division One team or the team that's been there for a few years has that experience to, to pull ahead. You know, so look, it, it'll, the experience in Division One will have done me no harm this year. They'll be disappointed that they didn't get a point, a couple of points on the board. But uh, you know, Andy McIntyre will be looking. You know, at a Leinster final, uh, avoiding Dublin, obviously getting to a Leinster final and 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 having a cut then, and maybe coming up with some sort of uh, left field tactic to try and take them on. You know, or Dublin have come back a little bit. No, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's a very small bit. You know, given what they've what they've lost. You know, you would have to say that it have to be a small impact on 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 a team when you lose that level of football or they've lost you know in Jeremy and Bernard and Jack McCaffrey and these guys as well so obviously you know Johnny be able to say touch more on that but uh, they'll, have, they'll have plenty more coming but from me point of view look you know they, they've, they've definitely developed uh, you know Shane Walsh and, and these guys they look they've they've got some good players you'll always have good players in Mead but uh, it's just unfortunate that they're coming up against you know arguably the greatest team of all time so um, the experience will have done them well I expect them to be in the Leinster final and to give a good account of themselves. And Johnny um, how good of an achievement was it for Dean Rock to overcome um, Jimmy Keaveney's all-time scoring record at the weekend there on Saturday? Yeah, look, a massive achievement. And considering, like, you know, I suppose Dean wasn't an automatic starter when he broke onto the dumb team first, so he would have spent a bit of time on the bench. So you're looking at probably the last five, six years where Dean has been, you know, the, the kind of uh, one of the first picks because of his consistency levels. And to achieve that, and uh, you know, in the period that he has, to be the all-time top scorer for Dublin. And overtake Jimmy Kibney is a, is a massive testament to 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 to, to Dean. Um, you know, as one guy that you know he's he's, he's a gentleman off the field and such a such a um, lovely fella or such a lovely footballer as well. Um, you know, and you can see that where he he practices the same technique, the same kind of loop, and he you know he doesn't get the credit he deserves in my opinion. Um, you know, he might not be blessed for pace you know and you know and born fellas but what he's very good at you know it's not about the pace getting in front it's the speed of speed of thought i think with with dean he has plenty of that where he can find a space or pocket of space or raise the situation and he always seems to find it find it where he's on the end of a pass and as well as that the lads look for him because his consistency and and his accuracy and in, 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 in his and his point taking as well as as his free taking. So, look, it's testament to him, you know. And then look, I suppose you you better mention Steve Clucko as well, being the all time um, holder of the most appearances for Dublin as well. So, which is a testament to him. And, and look, he's twenty was he twenty years in the goal now? Like so, 
when we're, we're cluck or being a kid when he came into the scene first, you know. So, yeah, like, you know, huge testament to, to, to cluck you know. But uh, in terms of how he's revolutionised the, the goalkeeping and the game, you know. So, um, I know we touched on it before, but, uh, you know, for me, uh, probably for consistency levels, probably the best player, in my opinion, over the last 20-year period, you know. Um, and, you know, we'll be up there with the, with the grades of the game, you know. Yeah, and moving on to third game in Division One, um, Donegal two seventeen, Tyrone two thirteen. Um, but it was it was a frustrating game nearly to watch in the first half. Donegal just messing around with the ball, kicking it. But I suppose it's nearly frustrating watching Tyrone because they have huge potential in the team, but they just kept sitting back all the time yesterday, and Donegal cut them open so many times and. When they're having that many numbers back and they're not able to, when they're conceding a lot, it's a bit questionable. You'd have to say the way they're playing. That video. Yeah, no, it is. It's uh, they, the Toronto are a funny one. Like you know, when you when you write their forwards down on paper, you know the the, the ability they have is phenomenal. Uh, like you know, obviously McKenna's back and uh, Mark, the likes of Mark Bradley, these guys, Peter Hart, they have a, they have a serious serious footballers in their own, and you know. Uh, very good goalie, one of the best goalies in the country. Um, you know, good, strong, you know, tough, teak, tough defenders as well. So uh, it's a funny one. Colin Cavanagh will be a, be a loss on this year. He's been, you know, leading them when when they've been having lulls over the last few years. Obviously, playing a midfield and sweeper, popping up for a score. You know, an inspirational sort of figure. So. You know, do they have those in their rank at the minute? I, I don't know. You know, Peter Hart, you look at Peter Hart, you look at Niall Morgan, but they don't seem to have a, a huge number of leaders um, as, like like the likes of, of Dublin have and and um, to, to really get to the next level. So they're, they're, they are a frustrating team. You think if they can get, you know, obviously Mickey's been there a long time and they've changed their coaches and stuff like that, but, you know, I, I think they're better than, than sitting back. I think they have more if they, if they push up. I think they have more of a... Uh, if they can get the balance right, obviously, is, is, is the best for Jerome. But I think they have more attack-minded players and, and you know, squeezing up on t- kickouts. If they can turn over kickouts, they have the players absolutely. You saw what McKenna did yesterday, you know, f- you know, athleticism, pace, bringing back that level of experience from Australia is huge. So, uh, you know, they, they'll be there and thereabouts. It's a huge game in two weeks' time. It's, 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 a, it's a massive game. It's great for, for, for the likes of us to be watching it. Uh, the first game of the season and uh, or of the championship and Donegal uh, and Tyrone probably Donegal slight favourites uh, going mm-hmm. a lot better. Um, they seem to be testing themselves a bit. Donegal they seem to be trying out stuff. I know you know they be into systems and, and and styles of play and Rochester would be very uh, coordinated that way. So you know in league games they can be frustrating because they could absolutely hammer teams but they seem to be trying and 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 and, and training for down the road which is obviously a good thing for for them but not great for the spectator but uh look it, it kind of petered out it was a it was a it was a poor game and it was there was no intensity to it um but that that <laughs> that'll be a lot different in in two weeks time i'd say and i suppose probably one of the most talked about things johnny in the game and um, coming towards the end of the game Rory Brennan's red card for touching the referee and probably the most talked about thing because you could see kind of a small area of shadow boxing really between the sides when they're going to meet again in two weeks. Yeah, look, he barely touched his arm, do you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, um, you, know you, go, you go to the to the Darren O'Connolly thing and, and uh, you know, for me, look, it was, it was, look, it was innocuous enough. A yellow card was sufficient enough, like, you know, but... Um, I look, it was just a bit of tr- uh, trick acting, you know. Um, for me, like you know, in relation to uh, the game itself, it was just um, you, you love to. I agree with Finn in relation to Tyrone. Um, the easiest thing in the world, in my opinion, or as a coach and a manager, is to get your players to stand, as come back, and stand in spaces in and in, in your inside your forty five. The hardest thing in, as a coach and a manager, in my opinion, is when you go and express and you give your players the license to go and, and pick passes out or to, to pick a 60-40 pass that might be of a potential to lose. The games are there to be won. And as Fintan alluded to there, you know, Toronto are some fabulous footballers and some serious forwards. And you look at some of the football play in the club championship and you're looking at it, Janie, if they really could let them off the leash, 
Um, and from that perspective, you know, I know last year I think they went away from their normal kind of dropping back and they got a bit of a trimming off Donegal. Was it Donegal? It wasn't, I think it was Donegal. Yeah, uh, yeah, and they went back to back to Mammy, as you so call it. But for me, look, you, 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 they they have to get away from from the fear of conceding goals. Like the game was about taking chances, you know. And you look like even still they drop so many people behind the ball, and they still conceded two seventeen. You know what I mean? And I know that like there wasn't much in there. Like it was, it was a real kind of a, a stamp screw of, of affair. It wasn't much intensity, but. If you really want to be serious about about winning stuff, you have to be able to go out and, and encourage your players to go and win games, and not be afraid to, that you're going to score or lose a few scores. You know, that's what the game is all about, like you know. So for me, it's at what stage now? You know, where 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 where, where they're at in terms of, you know, they got to another final there two years ago, um, didn't do a good count to themselves because they went back to to the kind of defensive stuff instead of like taking Dublin on and running at them, but. Um, and that's the biggest thing where you look at Kerry went like this year, they ran at Dublin, caused them problems, you know, and took two games for Dublin to beat Kerry. So, but anyway, look, that's my team was worth anyway. Yeah, and I suppose just touching on Donegal briefly before we move on to the last game, like some of their forwards yesterday, Michael Murphy, Jamie Brown, Paddy Morgan, Oshin Gallon, and throw Paddy McBrewerty in there. Some real potential, but I suppose their issue the last few years. They've been unbelievable on Ulster, but haven't been able to get past the Super 8. Would you say that a knockout championship will suit Donegal more, in that opinion? Yeah, I think it will. I think it'll. Yeah, I think it will suit some teams uh, a lot more. I think the likes of Donegal, the likes of Mayo. I think who can get themselves, you know, to a level on a day. You know, a couple of years back they they played Kerry. You know, Drew. Uh, you know, in an absolute thriller. Um, and just like they haven't, they've been kind of knocked out in the Super 8s by, by you know, a very, very tight margins over the last few years. So they've been there, thereabouts. But I think I think they have the players on any day to, to trouble any team. And, and that's Dublin included with, you know, obviously if you have Murphy in your team, then um, look, you've got you've got a serious string to your bow. So McBearty hasn't played, you know, like, you know, one of the best forwards in the country. And then, as you say, they've got Gallen. This Morgan looks a bit of a player. Uh, scored a brilliant goal yesterday, um, and 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 you know and the rest you know they they're, they're backs attacking they're attacking backs the own ball and gallers of these guys as well, and then you've got Ryan McHugh who can play anywhere so so and and a great goalie so look they've got a they've got a serious serious team at the minute uh, they've got they've got a good manager very good coaches and Carl and and Stephen as well so there it, it could be set up for a Donegal this year to to to, to you know to get to a semi-final, win Ulster, get to a semi-final and, and and have a right good cut at the dubs, you know. Um, obviously, Dublin are the team to beat, but, you know, if there's any year to, for someone to take them, it could be Donegal in that semi-final, I think, could be the team that could could have the best chance um, because of the players they have. And when you've got a leader like like Michael Murphy, one of the greatest players of all time in your team, uh, and one of the best leaders of all time as well, then... You know, if, if there's ability around him, which he hasn't had this level of ability for a while now, um, they, they'll do damage, I think, yeah. Absolutely. And then the final game, um, Kerry coming out on top, 17 points to 14 against Monaghan. But, like, just looking back at the highlights of the game, David Clifford looks even better than he did last year, Johnny, really. Yeah, he, he looked all right in fairness to him. Um, <laughs> I look at me, he's, he's top quality. Um you know, to to and and like I suppose credit to, to some of the top forwards that performed over the weekend. Considering you could see the benefit of the club, I feel in terms of like some of the debut the debutants that we've seen, Mayo and a few others, where the benefit of the county managers seeing these players in their club championship and bringing that kind of freshness into their play and into their into the county playing like you look at uh, Clifford he came off the back of a, of, a, of a fantastic year with his club as well so yeah look he will look here like he's a class act um and he's definitely definitely um, like you know what age you know he's like 23 22 and he's captain of the Kerry team so like just goes to show you um the, the, what he's thought of down there already so look I suppose the concern the thing is though like if if uh, a team does get a handle on him or can do a job or block the space that that he looks for, 
Um, you know, it is difficult to mark them as it is, but that's the concern I'd have with Kerry is about who else is going to step up um, from him. They've got some nice footballers there, but in terms of consistency, he's up there with the best. So, um, yeah, look, it was a fantastic performance. And look, it was a good run out, two good teams. And uh, look, he didn't get anything easy with Monaghan up there, you know. But uh, yeah, loving, I love it in a way that, that the in terms of the freshness and, and some of the football, some of the score taking has been excellent, you know. Yeah, and I suppose, Finney, a man to be mentioned a lot uh, with Kerry, Tony Brosnan finally getting his chance in the corner and Paul Ganey didn't even play. So if you're looking on the full forward line of Tony Brosnan, David Clifford and Paul Ganey, it's going to cause a lot of teams headaches. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think Brosnan is. Yeah, Brosnan is definitely one to watch. He he come he actually comes up here a bit. He's he, he goes out with Robert Finnerty's sister, uh, and he's actually togged out and trained with us the odd night there in Salt Hill uh, when when he's up. So uh, yeah, he's 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 a clever footballer. He's he's very very quick. Uh, he's but he's got an eye. He's got kind of he's obviously been playing with the Gooch and Croaks for the last number of years. So he's been learning from. Him. So you know even when the shot might be on he can pick out that pass so you know he'd be on the t- 21 or the 30 and he could you know when he'd have an easy point and he might just thread one through a needle the eye of a needle uh he can do that as well so he's a, he, he's a clever clever player um but you know james o'donoghue is obviously still there um hampered by injure injure injuries you've got paul ganey um you know but but Kerry have some good, good, good uh, workhorses as well. You know, Darren Monaghan, these guys, like they can, they'll need that. They'll need all that bit of graft around the middle of the pitch to get on the ball and and win the breaks and stuff. You know the, you know these these type of players that they've had before, the Liam Hassets and these guys. They they'll need a few of them as well. Obviously, David Moore will be big for them in the middle of the pitch because, you know, they'll need experience and Tommy obviously coming in and out. So, um. Yeah, look, they're 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 up there. It this they, they'll feel this is their year, given the way things have panned out. You know, they, you know, beat Cork. You're into a semi final against Galway, Mayo, or Roscommon. Realistically, um, will they fancy their chances against the three of those? They probably will. And then it's you know probably Dublin or Dublin or Donegal, probably Dublin in the final. And you know this year, shortened year. Look, Kerry, get a sniff of it. Uh, you know, they're 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 dangerous, and with Clifford, like Clifford is an unbelievable footballer. Uh, so so with him and your team, and and look, they're, they've improved in the backs as well. Peter Crowley's back. Ty Morley is a good full back, very good full back. Um, O'Sullivan in the corner. Uh, Johnny Lyne. They've got they've got good players. So, um, I give them a good chance this year. I give them a good chance to maybe upset the apple cart this year. Yeah. And um, Monaghan on the other side also, Johnny, avoiding um, Johnny Gaul, Tyrone, I think they're a man as well. And they'll be targeting next week. Um, it's a huge game for them, really. It's a must win against me to try and stay up. Um, but it's not guaranteed if they win that, that they could stay up. But um, they're obviously targeting Ulster, but I think they're out uh, the following weekend against Cavan. So I suppose two massive games in two weeks now for Monaghan. Yeah, look, absolutely. Look, um, it was great to see Conor McManus came on at half-time and he still ends up being a top scorer, you know, so with five points, two from freeze, you know. So, look, um, Monaghan have got some, some good footballers. Um, it's a pity, Joe, like that the the Super 8s are not here this year for the likes of a team like Monaghan with, the, with some of the new players they've brought in, you know, because um, they definitely, like, look, look, look at the other day, like, I was impressed with how they went about our business. Like, they played, like, look, Kerry were a better side overall, but they still, you can still see that there's that kind of uh, joy with Darren Hughes and, and Kieran Hughes and Darren, Darren Malone and that. Like, they've got, like, some good players, attacking players from deep as well. But, um, look, I suppose, the, for me, I think the, the, I can't see uh, them getting out of Ulster. I think it's Don- Donegal's to lose to be honest with you um i just can't see it um but definitely look i suppose Meadle will want to put two points in the board for us to stake a bit of pride do you know what i mean um and not ha- and not complete the whole league campaign on zero points so and they would have taken a lot of a lot of confidence out of the last day against dublin so yeah look it'll be definitely two big games ahead for money over the next few weeks 
Yeah, and just some of the Division 2 results. Um, Claire, 121, uh, Kevin, 20 points. 111, Claire, uh, 19 for Manor. 118, Westmead, um, 13 points each. But probably eye catching result uh, for us, Common, defeating Irma, 310 to 15 points. It didn't look great at the start, but they showed that bit of resolve to break down Irma. And like even some of the subs they brought on the last day, um, Finney and Connor Giovanni. Kieran Murta, Conor Hussey, Shane Clore and Eddie Nolan and Jared Murta wasn't even used so it's, it's shown that Anthony Cunningham has really built a huge step in Roscommon. Yeah, yeah, Roscommon are a team, um, you, know, they've, they, you know, I suppose they've shown it the last couple of years, they've won two of the last four uh, Connacht Championships and well deserved, you know, they gave us a hammer in a couple of years back and, and obviously came from five points down uh, to, 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 to win it last year so um, they've they've twenty twenty two very very good footballers in Roscommon at the minute, uh, and and as you said, Jeremy Murta didn't even play. He was probably their best player. So, um, you know, they're 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 very good on the ball. Anthony Cunningham is getting every bit out of them as well. So they're well drilled, and 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 Roscommon Mayo is going to be a great game in a couple of weeks' time. They're more or less up, I think. Uh, Roscommon they're more or less up to Division One. So can he try a few players next week? Po- probably he can. Uh, give the likes of Murta. Uh, there's a young guy, Carl Heenan, from Michael Glavies, uh, who did his cruciate. He, he was togged the year before last, did his cruciate. So he hasn't been seen, but you know, I, I, I work with him in the college and he's an absolutely fantastic footballer and, and, and definitely one to watch. I don't know, is he in the panel, but another skillful footballer. Uh, so they have a bit going for them. Uh, can they beat Mayo? It's, it's, it'll be an interesting game in a couple of weeks' time, definitely. I think. I think yeah, it's it's a huge game. Mayo will obviously be up for it, given what happened last year. So, um, but but look, Roscommon won't fear anyone at this stage. They'll feel they have the beaten of Mayo, Galway, Sligo, whoever uh, in Connacht particularly. So, um, you know, and, and Anthony will have them them chomping at the bit. So, you know, they have plenty of forwards. Connor Cox obviously a huge addition last year. Um, Great target man can kick scores from anywhere left and right. So Kieran Murta back as well. So they've plenty going for them. Uh, Roscommon at the minute, uh, they're well drilled. Um, uh, Maluli is back as well. So um, I, I fancy them to cause a few a few problems. I don't think. I think you know may, it could be Mayo's year, but uh, you know to beat them. But um, it's a it's a very hard one to call given what what Roscommon have done this year. And Johnny, just briefly on Irma, like they have some really skillful footballers, Don Eels, Jamie Clegg, Stephen Campbell, Rory Grugan. But they're nearly known as a team really that just tune out for five to ten minutes and that's what really cost them in the end. Um they were flying really against Roscommon at the start, but gave away two soft p- p- penalties and just really looked all over the place defensively the last day. Yeah, no, it was like when you consider that they had um, most common to to no score for the cuts of twenty seven minutes and the concentration levels to 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 do that, you know, and you know, and where does that go then after? So, what I'd say that more so than anything else is more than a bit of inexperience to the to a, to to the team. They've got quality footballers, are in Jamie Clark and and the O'Neills up front, but you're looking for leadership. You know, in your back line, you know your full backs in the back midfield to give you that kind of steadiness and and keeping that kind of lads on their toes. So like, I think that's where they're kind of just lacking that kind of a bit of guile. And you know, and look, uh, the bit of I suppose the what that with that lacking of experience, what Ross Common would have in, in spades in relation to what they've won the last two or two or four kind of titles. And as well as that, they've been up and down from Division One over the last few years. So that experience you could see told, uh, particularly in the second half, you know. And you know, as soon as they got the bit of momentum, the two penalties now look a bit of naive defending. Um, you know, uh, and look, is uh, no better man to just to rectify that. So you you kind of feel, you know, sometimes are they a bit kind of. You know, freeze when a bit of pressure comes on. Um, and look, I suppose um, they're only going to improve. Like they've improved. Like when really you consider where Mar Armar was when Giza took over, um, and the transition over the last few years when they've um, fluctuated up and down the leagues. Like he's done a fantastic job in relation to bringing in those young fellas. Um, 
you know, I still think, I still feel they, like they, they still bring an awful lot of bodies behind the ball. They still bring back around 14 guys behind the ball um, when, when at times, you know, that takes an awful lot of their players, you know, particularly when you're looking to get on, to, to, to go on the counter attack. I think, and that's where, you know, what you find is the, the emphasis on, on the counter attack, getting bodies behind, you know, you know, it takes a lot out, 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 out of mentally and physically. Um, whereas, you know, I, you spend less energy, in my opinion, if you put a higher press up the field, you know, and you're, 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 you're wasting 10 seconds of delaying or getting contact in if you, if you do it properly. But, um, yeah, look, hugely good, a lot of talent there. Um, as I said, look, pity the Super 8 turn for those guys because they would definitely would have, would have liked to see them get in there, you know, but, you know, just a lack of that kind of those leaders that you'd expect that you would need for Ulster. I think that's what they're kind of lacking, you know, for this year. Um, but definitely look uh, in the next couple of years, it'd be interesting to see what way, what path they go, you know. Yeah, and then just briefly, Division 3, um, Tipperary 116, Offaly 16 points, Derry 214, Longford 12 points, former AFL player, Connor Glass returned there, um, Cork 519, Louds 16 points, Div secure promotion. But I suppose Finian, um Cork probably Ronan McCarthy not the happiest with the injuries they picked up in recent weeks. Tomas Clancy, um, Kieran Sheehan back as well, uh, Kevin Crowley I think gone as well. Like to lose all them players and going into a Kerry game, it probably could be the difference really now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's unfortunate, it's particularly Kieran Sheehan. You know, I was looking forward to uh, you know a guy I played with before and a really really good footballer. He, you know, obviously took the chance out in Australia, came back, and I'm sure he had the bit between his teeth to get right stuck back in. You know, and um, it, it's it's a pity now because it it would have been great. It's you know it's great to see these guys coming back, the likes of McKenna and Glass and. And obviously, Kieran coming back into into their county setups to see how they've they've evolved and developed. So it's a pity for him. And those injuries, you know, Tomas Clancy, they're, they're they're a lot of kind of experienced heads as well that you'll need in a in a in a Kerry match. Um, it's 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 unfortunate. Still, look, still a lot of a lot of talent. You know, you know the likes of Rory Dean, Mark Collins, these guys like Cork have come on a lot in the last number of years. Obviously, win the minor and under twenty as well. So. I, I think Cork are coming. They're going to be a force again in the next couple of years. I really do. There's a lot of work been done at underage down there. Um, will they be Kerry this year? I, I I can't see it. You know, unless you know. I suppose one thing we're forgetting about is it's it's winter football. Uh, we all know what it's like uh, for our clubs, but uh, uh, at inter county level, just you know, you a rub of a green. Bad weather, hailstones. You know those nights you watch on on air sports or <laughs> where you you can hardly see you can hardly see the ball, and they used to have the orange ball or whatever it was. Johnny, you played in a few of them as well, no doubt. Uh, you can hardly see the the the, the, the umpire, the linesman giving out to you. But uh, yeah, so so who knows? Who knows? The weather could be play a big part as well. But I think Kerry just. You know where they are in their development uh, of that of their team. They're just they'll have too much for Cork. Even though I I do think Cork are coming and uh, they'll be a force, as Johnny says. If there were super eights this year, it'd be great to see them in it. Yeah, and then uh, finally um, Division Four, uh, Carlo two seventeen, Sligo two fifteen, uh, Wexford. 113, Limerick 110, but um, the most eye-catching result of Division 4 of the weekend, Wicklow 7-11, um, Antrim 7 points, an unbelievable result, I suppose. Being involved with Wicklow for a small while, uh, Johnny, could you see them progressing now? Because like, what they've done is phenomenal so far, and Davy Breck from Kildare looks like a real passionate manager and the right man to have there, really. Yeah, no, look, come here, credit to the lads. Um, they've done a fantastic job the last day. Um, now, look, I suppose the different things, there's a, a different things in relation to Antrim and were in full strength and there's a COVID issue, but I don't know how true that is, but you, you can only play what's in front of you and to, to, to kick 7-11, you know, mm -hmm. a, any day is, is a great achievement. And look, you know, they're still the same, or the, you know, Shawnee Furlong banging two goals as well. And, you know, listen, Dave Rook's a good guy. Um, he done very well with with, uh, with Kildare under twenty ones, and look, uh, 
and look, the lads that that he has there, they're 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 fantastic, fantastic bunch of lads. You know, we're, we're, we're some young lads brought in there as well, and we've got a couple of one or two lads from from uh, Ballantyre and, and St Jude's as well. But yeah, look, Dean Haley is the captain there. He was, I had him a captain when I was there. Fantastic leader for the lads. Um, you know, leads by example, and look, they they won't take their eye off the ball. They have a serious opportunity. It's winner takes all. Is what you want. League football all about. You know, they travel down to Wexford next week. And the winner gets 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 promoted, you know what I mean, and the chance of of you know maybe winning winning the league as well. So look, what a fantastic opportunity! Um, no one's saying that. Look, Wexford looks impressed. I was impressed with Wexford. Um, I watched it the other day as well, and um, you know we've got some nice footballers. Dottie Waters in midfield will take watching. You know Ben Brosnan still still plugging away up front. Um, they got some nice footballers. So yeah, look, it's. it's Fantastic, delighted for them. Um, you know, and you know, uh, it will be a massive boost for the county because there's some genuinely good people down there who are always putting uh, putting their shoulder to the wheel. And you know, it will be great. Look, for being involved down there for four years, I, I only love. Now, I devoid of loyalty now because like my mother's from Wexford as well, so I'm a half Wexford man as well. But look, yeah, look, it's it's a. Uh, It'd be nice to see Wicklow getting back up into Division Three, but um, yeah, but they've big task here. And look, in saying that as well, look, um, Limerick still have a have still have a, an outside chance as well. You know what I mean? If they win, and then also uh, I think Antrim. So it's great that you're going into the next weekend and having that kind of uh, a championship feel. You know, um, but look, to credit the lads, the lawyer for them. You know, and and lads to put in a serious effort. Now Rory Finn as well. You know, so. Yeah, look delightful. Yeah, and now just touching on the under twenty uh, semi finals, go one fifteen carry one ten, and um, go missing five players due to sus- suspected um, COVID nineteen issues. But like the five players they were missing and to be carry is just unbelievable what they done really Finney. Yeah, it was a it was a funny one. It was a funny week up here with with with. To, you know the feelings on that game. Obviously, we had the COVID issue with Mike Cullen, and 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 you know three of their best players, the under twenties best players, are from Mike Cullen, uh, and our two guys then who are who are starters, uh, Carl Sweeney, wing back, who's you know probably got huge potential uh, as a as a senior coming going forward, and and Tom O'Callaghan as well. So you know five of their their main players not there. Uh, and, and to go and, and, and beat Kerry in Limerick was absolutely fantastic. So I think then there was an issue with Kerry. I don't know that they have a COVID issue or they missing a yeah. few as well. So uh, it was really um, it was really kind of the, the the reserves, you know, if you want to call them that, that came in and and, and huge, you know, did you, Keen Hernan was man of the match, I think. Uh, I'm not sure would he have been starting. Uh, if the five lads were there, so uh, phenomenal for our lads. You know, we've been we've been competitive at that grade over the last number of years. We've been in finals, you know, competitive in semi-finals, competitive against Dublin last year in the semi-final. Uh, you know, we've in the early 2010s, we've we've won two. Um, so so look, this this team as well has been in all Ireland minor finals over the last two or three years. So. Uh, and Don Lafarta, who's their manager, has been was over them then as well. So, you know, I think. Look, uh, if we won it on Saturday, it'd be absolutely, it'd be brilliant. It'd be brilliant for the lads, brilliant because they've been kind of on that journey from minor uh, over the last three or four years, a lot of that team. So, uh, they, they'll, you know, there's no prizes for, for graft or effort, but, uh, you know, you know, I don't think anyone would begrudge it to them. I think the other side of the coin is that Dublin have, you know, they'll, they'll be disappointed with last year. You know they were the team to beat, and then to be kind of pipped in the final was, you know, was was disappointing. So I think, you know, they'll have a chip on their shoulder this year. I, uh, you know, Johnny will know more about their team, but I think they'll be very, very um, sorry about what happened last year. And I think, you know, they've got some skillful, skillful footballers. Um, I know, um, you know, Kieran Arch is still there. Uh, the young guy, I don't, I don't know his name. That got man of the match the last day. I think his mother's from Galway. Uh, another. Uh, import he took off us, Johnny. So, uh, uh, so look, they're, they're they, you know, Dublin are favourites, but you know, it'll be a hard team for for Donny O'Flaherty 
Barta to pick on, on Saturday, trying to bring in the lads, you know, trying to leave out the lads who, who got him there and then bring in the lads who missed out. So it's a difficult one for him, but hopefully we can get over the line. It'd be great, great buzz for us, you know. And then Johnny and um, Dublin defeating Tyrone by two points. And I suppose Tom Gray would probably be really impressed with the resolve Dublin showed, really, because they probably weren't at their best, but really just a noticeable thing with this uh, Dublin team, like their conditioning and physicality for an under-20 team is unbelievable, really. Yeah, no, look, in fairness to the lads, um, they, they, they dug it out like they were behind for a, lot, for a good period of, of the game. And um, look, I suppose, look, and I, I need the model that's come, but the, the development squads and those lads have come through. They would have been all playing together, like consistency uh, onwards from under 15 all the way through. So they would have built up that kind of, you know, natural, but you would see the kind of James McCarthy, that Rolls Royce type of an engine and stuff, you know, and you could see the kind of similar kind of attributes in terms of with the lads. But like, you know, um, the last day, like Lee, Lee Gannon wing back was excellent for them. Um, huge impressed with him. And then look at Man of Match was. Uh, Mark Lavin, number 10, he was very impressive as well. And uh, look, look, Karen Archer is a class act. Um, he could turn it on any any given day, like, you know, so like, but like, uh, like Luke Swan, I think full forward caused them problems. But I was very, very impressed with Luke was, um, it was his work right off the ball. It was it, the pressure that he was putting on Tyrone when they were trying to get out. And it was that, it was that kind of hunger and desire that, that really impressed me about him. But look, yeah, I think, um, They'd be smarter from last year, but the fact, like, like I watched the Galway game as well, and and uh, like you can't help but admire the, the the way of football that they play as well. They're a good footballing team, um, and you know, I don't Dublin would need to be at them at the top of their game to beat Galway. In my opinion, I just think with the, if with that if they give those Galway players any space at all, they're going to be exploited. You know, so um, it'll be interesting to see. Look, it's a, it'd be a war of attrition. You know, the with the rain that's this weekend, what how way the pitch is going to hold up on Saturday. You know, a lot of heavy rain today and tomorrow and during the week. So yeah, look, it, it, it could be more for a game of defenders. Me and Finton would will be happy with that. You know, so not not too much tracing and throwing. You know, but ah uh, uh, yeah, but look, me look, it's it, look, it's isn't look, it's great that we can look forward to it. Um, and uh, look, it'll be a fascinating duel. And like, come here, listen, knockout, knockout football, all around final. And uh, look, yeah, you'd like to think that Dublin will learn from last year. But as you know, any given day, and particularly look under twenties, you know, you will see it like it's it's not a given. They're not adult, they're not nailed, all nailed down as senior footballers in their old clubs and stuff. You know, there will still be a lot of nerves. So on any on any given day, you know, particularly when you're dealing with minor under seventeen or under twenties, there's always that you know where you, you you know you have that that bit of nervousness as young as as young fellas, you know. Um, and I think uh, yeah, look, it's it's uh, look, it should be a good game. It should be definitely a good game, and look forward to it, you know. Absolutely great to have the action back, and uh, hopefully now more action to look forward to in the coming weeks. But thanks, Billy, for your time, lads.